over here. And welcome to another episode of the Indie Escape Network presents a Harlow's Haunt special, Harlow's Haunt Tampa Spook Easy premiere plug with Terry Gerald. How are you, Terry? Not only not bad. How are you uh, this evening, Mr. Ridgely? Excellent, excellent. Very excited about this Monday night. So this Monday night, I hear rumors are floating around. There's something going on. Is there? I don't know. Yeah, I think something to do with uh, Harlow's. I just I gotta look it up. I'm sure it's on the interweb somewhere. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. A big screening at the Spookeasy in Ebor City. That could be what it is. Ah, uh, let's see if I have something. It on Nearly that. slipped my mind. Let's see banners. Uh, kind of like this place right here. Very much like that place, and um, I, I can't. And I'll, I'm sure I'll go on about it all night on the show, but. This is such a cool place. If anybody's in the Tampa, even Orlando area, surrounding areas, or even uh, South Florida, want to venture up um, and check it out. It's such a cool, cool, cool venue, cool place. If you ever want to feel like you're in the Adams family living room, this is the place. So uh, really, really uh, awesome place. And we're uh, so stoked that they're going to be uh, showing Harlow's Haunt as their featured film on Monday night. Well, I'm kind of concerned because uh, Ken is saying it sounded like Joe was in the bathroom. A am I sounding echoey? That's not good. Mm, seems kind of okay here. Mm, okay. <laughs> it depends on your bathroom, too. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got a Facebook user who didn't give us permission to use their stuff. Howdy. I'm not quite yeah, sure right. who that is. Uh, Sean howdy. Smithson. What's Sean up, brother? Sean Smithson. Uh, hey, Sean. You sound fine. Let me know who you are so I can thank you for telling me I sound fine. See, there's a difference there. You sound fine or you sound so fine. Hey. We'll uh, save it you for sound later. fine. You sound fine. Oh, there may be more than one mystery user here, man. I don't know. This is getting freaky. Hey, there's uh, Kevin Cleveland. I just saw right there. Kevin Cleveland is there. Kevin. Nice. So you have some uh, Brett Wagner lost Leatherface. Oh, Brett Wagner. Wow. Hey, wow. good to see you. I think he kind of knows this other cat. You want to introduce the guy that's in the green room? I think I will. We got this guy that uh, is we know and love a dear, 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 dear part of our crazy little family. Uh, Harlow Greer himself, John Dugan. John, John, where are you, John? John, John, come in, John. John, or should this I call you Mr. Greer? Ground oh. control to Major John. Uh, oh, hey, guys. Good evening. <laughs> What's oh, happening? Am I on? How you doing? Are we rolling, Bob? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you want me to do this, right? <laughs> What's he doing? I don't know. It's good. I got to say that reggae post the other day was just stellar. I love that. <laughs> um, so we, we, we got to wait for John because he's on a slight delay. Yeah. So it's going to kind of like be watching um, an old Godzilla flick or something. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, it's classics. Uh, um, Sean Smithson saying Terry needs to send me some logo images. I, I will do that. Uh, I keep saying I'll do that, but I, I'll continue saying I'll do that. And uh, you'll be surprised one day when the, it just happens. You know what, Sean? I have some. I can send them to you. <laughs> See, I, what, I would what do time, that. No, what, what time? It starts, at, it starts at 8 or 9? starts at 8 o'clock. Uh, again, Spooky Easy Lounge and Joe had okay. the... Oh, oh, oh and we're going to get there at 7. Yeah, okay. I got it. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to show up you know, a little bit early and some cool stuff. Uh, after the showing, we're going to have a little Q&A. Um, there's going to be a few of us there. And um, and so, you know, we can answer questions, chit chat, do a little song and dance. Um, probably. Oh, yeah, sounds good. Right 
<laughs> yeah, so so it's going to be a, a, a nice, fun little event. Uh, I mean, there's no admission or anything. It is, <clears throat> the thing about Spook Easy Lounge is even though it's kind yeah. of a bar, it's not like a... Uh, hey, could, hey, could we do... Hey, Joe, I got an idea, man. What if we do speed Q&A? It's like, no, next. Yeah. So, like, next. speed dating, but <laughs> Q&A? <laughs> yeah, you have five I, seconds. Make it count. You know, if a lot of things are going a little quicker that way, I was just uh, well. <laughs> so, so, this is going to be I've new for me. Speed, because... Have you ever seen speed golf before? It's hysterical. Oh, <laughs> speed. Seen speed golf. I've never seen speed uh, golf. It's actually funnier than a speed q and A, I I think, probably. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Joe, do you want to ask me something or something? Like, well, how are you guys do doing? What Do I want to ask you something? Yeah, I want to ask, how the hell am I going to tolerate you for a two-hour car drive to Tampa <laughs> from the airport? Can... Oh, Jesus Christ, Joe, I can't tell what you're saying. I'm so... I don't know. I have earbuds in. I'm going like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> If it works, yeah, I'm an idiot. Bring, bring myself back in. No, I'm, Can no, you not hear me you. now? Okay, Ow. you're you're so good, Joe. Yeah, you know, I, uh, we have these. How's, how's my audio, Joe? How's my audio right now? And it's great. Well, you sound good. You're just on a delay. How about now? How's it now? <laughs> you sound good now. It's, it's got a little twang. <laughs> So, I, I got to show this picture of John when on set. One of my favorite pictures right there. Isn't that a cool there shot? Is, that's spectacular. That is freaking awesome. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, uh, I actually got to go to the set of Harlow's Hunt for a day. When, when we say a day, you know, Terry's like, yeah, come out for a few hours. 12 hours later in the <laughs> start <laughs> yeah <laughs> in, in, in hey, that's the film business, so. heat. <laughs> uh, well john it's like you, the, it's like the army hurry up and wait <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i i get there i see terry i see john john comes over to me the first thing we do is we try to do this mean mug thing but then, like three seconds later, we just couldn't hold it in. But I mean, an amazing set. Everybody had a blast. Terry was sweating his ass off. Um, he, he was. It was I, a hot. It was hot mother, man. It was a hot mother. It was a warm day. Yeah. Oh, see, I thought you were going to keep that that shot. Off. <laughs> I look like hell, man. Look at that. But uh, Terry, explain. It to really is amazing that nobody went to the hospital for dehydration or heat stroke or some shit. Man, it was it was a rough day. I had another floor today. So wait a minute, John. Compare that to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Which was worse? Yeah. That chainsaw. Yeah. I'd say chainsaw was worse, but I'll tell you what. This was damn kind of close to it. <laughs> And that's uh, probably worse because I had latex makeup on, you know, which is, oh, that's great, man. Everybody should do that. Yeah, it's I'm so sure much that fun. makeup is just a, a joy. <laughs> how, how, long, how long as spells did you have um, the makeup on? I mean, how, how many hours at a time would you have that on? Like for friggin'. Are you talking about the makeup process? Yeah. Yeah. How, how, uh, well, how the, you can that? The first time, it, uh, it took them about seven hours, and then I uh, shot for ten. Oh, God. And the second time, it got down to, I think it was like right around five hours or maybe a little less than that. But then I had to shoot for like 25 hours, some shit. Wow. Uh, just... Yeah, it was pretty awful, yeah. But you but, should get the big trophy you know, I mean, you know I, it was worth it I, you know I'm still what 50 years later still talk, talking about and uh, making a little dough off of it so uh, ain't a bad way to retire you know <laughs> that, definitely, man my forehead yeah. looks huge in this picture is it my forehead really that big <laughs> well yeah it looks like you're crowning <laughs> 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 let me out, man. Let me out. Uh. So I got a few more, a few more onset 
pictures that some I took, some I did not. I mean, I, I got to tell you, Terry, Amy, Amy was freaking phenomenal uh, on the set. Holy crap, man! She oh, is she's like incredible. Ricochet. You could not, she's you like could not have rabbit. asked for a better partner. A- Amy is awesome, and just just so you know, Amy's working with me now in Black Dog Films, and we've you know just kind of kept together and, and keep pushing this thing and um and really kind of taking this last little bit to sort of get things right and um i know we're going to get to it but uh, the dvds are hitting next week they're being stamp pressed whatever as we speak and there's the cover art and I, i'll point out something and and there's the slip cover art on the uh can you throw the dvd back up a second i can disc one this is a special two disc set so it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to have the feature presentation on disc one, but disc two is going to have, it's about 20, 21 minutes of a, a behind the scenes called Behind the Haunt. So there's you know, some cool stuff uh, on there. So you can watch us uh, standing around sweating and, and you know, I, I, I almost gave stuff away. There's a lot of red in it. So, so <laughs> it's a fun disc. And um, yeah, so we're really stoked about that. And uh, then the other channels that's going out. So, so what is this going to be available? This will be available. They should be delivered here uh, roughly the end of next week. They're all in the uh, replicator, reproducer, producers' hands now. Uh, went through a bunch of gyrations for the cover art and got some really good reviews for the cover art as well already. And uh uh, one from uh, this uh, Joe Ridgely guy, uh, mm-hmm. two especially. Really appreciate your uh, your feedback and uh, your thoughts on it. Um, Rick Stazinski, the selfie guy uh, from Terrifier 2, dug the movie. And Rick, uh, I'll plug him a little bit. He's got a, uh, he just released his own movie called The Selfie Guy. And what he does, if you're not familiar, he goes everywhere. <laughs> he he uh, goes to all the conventions and stuff. But his thing is he, just shoot selfies and they're funny, you know, with people with fans and friends and things like that. And he just got this idea like, man, this would make kind of a cool movie. So he did it. Now he's working on selfie guy too. So Rick gave us a real nice review. Um, and in fact, I think they are showing Rick's movie the same night after ours, but downstairs of spook easy. The downstairs part is called the catacombs and it's, um, it's got its own thing going down there. I think they're going to show, uh, the uh, 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 selfie guy down there. So that's a little thing there. And then Julian Giallo, Giallo from Dread Central gave us a nice uh, nice review. So, hey, I don't know. People like it. So wait a minute. So so Monday we'll find John down in the catacombs? Possibly. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if he's frozen or has mean mug or what the hell's he doing. I don't know. Oh, okay. there he goes. Back. <clears throat> Thank God he grew his facial hair back, man. Did you see those pictures of him? Like it, when his face was naked? I was scared, John. That frightened me. Yeah. Huh? Me? Are you talking about mine? <laughs> yeah, when you shaved all your shit off. That frightened me. You were scary. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I look all like, like I'm made out of rubber or something. <laughs> and it feels it's weird too it's like yeah it's like it's not your skin or something it's, when's the last time you shaved you <laughs> it's been a while what'd your wife think john yeah because i don't know your skin it, 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 for one thing my upper lip looks about wait a minute let me get it on camera here looks about that big <laughs> You know, <laughs> if it's just skin, <laughs> oh, right. Oh, right. and then yeah, you would have to ask me that when I got a buzz like this. I, I could talk about just this detail for hours. <laughs> you ever notice how many pores you have on your nose, man? <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever been that high. I counted all the pores on my nose once. I counted every pore on my nose one time. <laughs> but but yeah. did you ever lose count? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, what's your phone rings or something? There's, oh, there's yeah, weird. several times. It took me about four days. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Terry, you got to yeah. do me a favor. Uh, I'm there. If you can, real fast, can you send me that picture of uh, you, John, and Kelly at the airport, or not the airport, the uh, airbase where she, uh, you guys were doing that thing? Let me see. I I don't know if I have it on this. I don't computer. have it right off hand, Joe. Let, let me see if I can have her send it to you. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Kelly, if you could send that to me, that'd be freaking great. That's hysterical. I love that picture. So, John. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. T tell us a little about being on the set of Harlow's Haunt. Uh, that was great. I mean, you know, we had, you know, great director, you know, great crew. Good actors, a good story, and it was hotter than. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you lost the. But you know, through all, all the hardship, I mean, we managed. We actually managed to have some fun, you know, and laugh and shit like that, you know, between all that stuff. And and Terry was just such a giving uh, director. He just he pretty much just kind of let me go, you know. Um. I, I'm sure we talked about things, but he pretty much just gave me free reign, which is wonderful. You know? Well, I, so, I guess, and we had one really long. I don't know. If, I don't know if you were there, Joe. But we had this one really long, difficult scene that was really had a lot of dialogue in it, and uh, neither neither one of us, uh, me and, uh, and 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 Crystal, uh, were really on top of the script word wise verbatim. So uh, we just yeah. Uh, I, I was improvise. actually there for that. Yeah. I was there for that. I was in the cabin, and I heard Amy and, and and Terry specifically say, "Don't eat the bread." Guess what? The first thing John did was when he got a piece of the bread. <laughs> I was in the zone, man. Come on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man, that bread, that loaf of bread. I might have out. thought you said, please eat the bread. You know, I don't know. The crust but, was like... It was you know, he life. just... Uh, you know, when Crystal and I realized neither one of us were on top of the script, you know, uh, dialogue-wise, um, but we knew what was going on, you know, or what we had accomplished in the scene. Um. Uh, we thought, you know, we could do it. We asked uh, 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 Terrence and Amy if it was okay, and they said, you go for it. So, you know, that was one long take. That, that We was... did it in one long take. And it was one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had, you know, connecting with another actor and stuff. It was like I, we didn't realize anybody else was there, you know. It was that intimate. It was... Uh, it was just terrific. And, uh, you know, I can thank uh, uh, Crystal Gorski for that. And, and also, of course, uh, the Amy and Terrence uh, for just letting us go. It was well, there, great. There's yeah. you guys and Crystal. I want to I want to acknowledge Crystal. She was going to try and join us tonight, but she's been under the weather. She's been fighting a, a flu or something. So she... Uh, oh, there we are. <laughs> so... Um, she uh she was amazing but yeah um that that that's what they mean when they talk about movie magic i think is what happened there it um and like i said that that was a really long scene ton of dialogue um and uh, I, I know y'all were, were cursing me over that that's all right and uh there was just a, a lot of a lot of nuance and a lot of emotion because it's a very expository scene. It's a little over six minutes long, and and we uh, you know discussed it, and you all really dialed in on what you needed to hit, and just letting it be organic. Man, that was I, you know I've watched it five thousand times, you know, through the edit and all that, and did very little to it because it was just so powerful. It's one of those things that you. You touch it, you're going to break it. You're going, you're going to lose that mojo. And man, I that um, you you and Crystal both were just shocking at how how good 
you put those characters on like a suit of clothes and, and, and you were those two characters. Um, and for, for that whole entire cabin scene, you know, the, the other shots involved too, you, you guys just mesh together so well. I, I just, I, I, I can't put it on to like, just watch to, you know, tinker with a thing or, or whatever. Cause um, I end up watching the whole thing. It's just like, it's so compelling, so powerful. And I've seen it so many times and I still don't lose the uh, enthusiasm for it. So you, you all, I got to give you so much credit for bringing that energy to it. It, it was, it was definitely a gift to, uh, to catch that on, on camera. So that wasn't I, me. I, I'm going to get weepy. <laughs> <laughs> <Later>. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, their their scenes were were incredible, and and Crystal slid right into her part very well too. And um, there was uh, there's another scene. Yeah, with, she's 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 just terrific. She she's she's such a good person, uh, and that really I think comes through in particularly that character. Um, there's that 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 richness, that goodness to the character. And I think that a lot of her natural yeah. self um, shine through there too. But John, a couple scenes of yours though, like that one with a still Joe put up is I, I get chills whenever I watch this scene and when people see it, they'll, they'll see why. I mean, oh, yeah. you, <laughs> you, you did this thing and it was like, Ooh, I, I, I back up from the screen a little bit while I'm looking at it. <laughs> It's so so freaking good, man. I, I, I just I, I'll go on. I, I love that that thing you did. It's <laughs> now I, I took a couple of pictures behind the scene as well, and I mean it was okay. Granted, my camera skills are not the greatest by any means, but. Yeah, it, I mean, it was just, uh, it was the first time I was on a set, and let me tell you, everybody was professional, but still had fun, and, you know, Terry, John, I didn't realize that you guys had this particular kind of relationship, and when I bring the picture up, you'll understand what I mean. I, Terry has a fistful of ass, I think. <laughs> I, I was hoping that wouldn't be ever caught on film, but, you know... <laughs> You, you blink for one second. <laughs> yeah, well, now it's out, John. And John's apparently a fighter pilot. John, he uh, flew a mission while he was here, too. Yeah. Nice. So thank you, Kelly, very much for sending the pictures over. That was awesome of you. Those are great pictures. That was a, a fun day, too. That was... Uh, uh, the last day after we had uh, done all the shooting and uh, that's over where Kelly works at stallion 51, where they have uh, P 51 Mustangs and really, really cool place. <laughs> so let's see where did, did we lose John? I, I'm, you there? I'm thinking we did John. Hi. There's... Oh, oh, there you I'm are. John. <laughs> <laughs> John, were you just drinking a beer? Was a caller? <laughs> John, that's first a, time, long time. Program. My name is Joe. I got a question. Hey, Joe. Okay, that was sarcasm. That is not anyway. a beer. See, that's a cream soda. <laughs> Anybody yeah. remember the old days of radio shows? Come on. Ah, the shadow. The long Joe. Long time, first time caller. Long time listener, first that's time caller. That's a question, Joe. Yeah. Um, yeah, now we need a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. How do you keep your hair looking so beautiful? Per plus. <laughs> I'm glad you asked that. Uh, I don't wash it for weeks at a time. <laughs> and the uh, natural oils from my, you know, just exudes from my body. You have to let it season. Body. <laughs> uh, lubricate my hair sufficiently to give me glistening. The whole reason I don't wear my hair down when John's it's here is because it's so much prettier than mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. Hey, man, I'm going to have to fucking sign off. Hey, Joe. Hey, Terry. 
Yeah. Yes. I'm going to have to go. Well, well. Uh, love you all, and I'll see you in a few days. In a few Absolutely. days, can't wait. And thanks to all the callers who called in or whatever. <laughs> what? yeah, I, I don't know who won the camel soup thing, but we'll have to do that uh, that drawing next. Don't remember the camel soup song? Oh. 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 Never mind. Okay, I'll see you in a few days, guys. See you, John. <laughs> yeah. Love you, John. Bye. Bye. Have a good weekend. All right. So, okay, that got awkward quick. Um, <laughs> I'm a candle soup. Freaking candle joke. soup. Mm -mm good. It's a hit. It's always a hit. And here we are. Mm -mm good. Is that what you're talking about? No, I, you know, I don't know. You're you're a youngster. But, you know, they used to do, like, the thing you could call the radio and sing the Camel Soup song. You'd win, like, a case of soup or whatever. Really? So, yeah, I would I would call people, like, at work, like, friends or, like, friends of friends or whatever. And I, I At one point, I guess I had a radio voice. And I'd call and I'd freak them out. And I'd get them singing and uh, singing the Camel Soup song. And then, of course, you know, lay a heavy tirade of obscenities on them and hang up. <laughs> <laughs> So wait a minute, this is when you were in West Virginia yeah, and you had yeah. a radio voice with the accent? Oh, <laughs> West Virginia. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a, had a face for radio. <laughs> Me too. That's why I started podcasting before this whole video shit came along. See, and then they brought cameras into it and everything. Right? <laughs> yeah. Why'd you have to go and do that? We were just fine on exactly. AM. <laughs> All right, so now we're now we're gonna drill you, Harlow's aunt. Yes, that's share, it. Sh share some memories. <coughs> share some good times. Man, there is so much. We we had so much fun um, on this this thing. You know, from from start to finish. And of course, it it was a lot of long hard days on set. Um, and, and the poster. I want to give uh, uh, holler out to Kevin Cleveland. Uh, design that uh, the the girl is um, our final girl, Brill Babcock, and she is uh, tentatively going to be at Spook Easy. Um, and um, it, it's such a, a cool, like iconic design, and, and it's you'll see it just everywhere. But um, yeah, uh, everything because we we sh again not giving too much away. We shot primarily in two different prime locations but they were wildly different and so each had its own set of challenges um and but it brought kind of a, a unique texture and feel to the final product i think it's it's it looks and you've seen it joe it kind of looks and feels really different it's it's got elements of you know a lot of different things going on there so uh and, and that was part accident, part intentional. I mean, a lot of things turn out better than I hoped or designed to come out. Like the scene we were just talking to John about with he and Crystal. Um, that was a pretty grueling scene. And just how we uh, uh, decided to like, okay, okay, you have these points, you have those points, have at it, have a conversation as if you're those two people and just roll into it. And you know, the engine got going and boom, by the time they were halfway through, it, it was just, it was shocking when I called cut, it was just like dead silence. It's like, you know, normally it's like, a, you know, people just, you know, cut into normal life. It's like, no, they just stayed in their spot. Everybody just kind of looked at each other. I expected tears to start rolling or something. It was really a powerful, powerful moment. Um, so that was really a lot of fun. But one of the locations we shot uh, of, the vast majority of the movie is at our friends out at Sir Henry's Haunted Trail in Plant City, which is a real live working haunt. Big, big place. Uh, the the owners, yeah, this is um, one of the uh, mazes. Um, and um, we, uh, we actually uh, shot some in there. Um, Zach Glaros is the owner. And, uh, and Calvin um, is the uh, like director that kind of runs everything. And those guys and the whole team, the whole staff, everybody could not have been more helpful. I mean, everything is like, do you guys need an extension cord? Do you need this? Is there, any, do you need that power switched on over there? I, they were just so right there for us. And we become really, really close friends. And so I want to give them a little plug. They are doing a, um, their Halloween haunt was amazing. They, they had uh, three new mazes. Um, 
and uh, they've got escape rooms, uh, axe throwing, um, all kinds of cool stuff. But they are doing a Christmas haunt uh, for Christmas. And so I think it starts next week. I can't remember the exact date, but if you go, if anybody's interested and you're in the, the central Florida area, it's Sir Henry's Haunted Trail.com. You have to get tickets online, they don't sell them at the venue. But man, it is worth it. It's right off I 4. It's real easy to get to between Orlando and Tampa. Um, really, really, really fun place. The the haunts are really scary, really immersive. You do, you don't just kind of go through a little maze and you know in the one door and out the, the exit door. You will go out one door and maybe go through the woods a ways and then go into another building. And it just takes you on a journey. And they're they're done so well. Those guys love them. Those places a lot bigger than I anticipated when yeah, I got there. I mean, it goes because we were shooting at that one um, set way out in the woods, and you you found us. I think that's why I first ran into you was way out there in, in that woods, and it goes goes back. And so we had a lot of fun out there. Uh, another place we shot is an attraction area in Kissimmee called Old Town. And um, it's it's more of a, a, a you know, an Orlando type attraction. It's right near Disney. There's a bunch of shops, restaurants, and all that kind of thing going on. It's a, a social center, so um, had had a good time there as well. And and uh, those people were really good to us. Um, but you know, again, we just it was such a fun thing because everybody put so much heart and energy into the project. Um, the cast. Um, um, uh, sp- I, Come on, I just go, shut up, shut up, don't <laughs> say too much. The, the, the parts are, are, I mean, it just, it just worked out so well. And uh, well, let me ask you from an indie that. aspect. So yes. how difficult was it to land these places that you filmed at? I mean, you guys were, I'm not giving anything. You were at a bar at one point. I mean, getting mm-hmm. a bar, that's freaking amazing for an indie flick. That's what I was going to say. I need the place. Go out, out, out. (laughs) Um, No, it, it, it's, um, and I'll, I'll kind of throw this out as like an umbrella. And, um, the, the key, I think the key of keys was planning and planning so far ahead of time and try and plan as much as you want. You're still not going to get every base covered, but get as much as you can done. And like for Sir Henry's, Um, a cabin, an old kind of, you know, murky, run down, nasty looking old Florida cabin. You'd think they would be easy to find. Right. That was my initial thought. Like, ah, be simple. I'll just, you know, nose around, find 20 of those in an afternoon. It's impossible. Um, there, there were some out there, but then people wanted like, you know, astronomical day rates. And and it's like, well, you know, where things were too modern. I I had one really um, good offer come along, but it kind of sucked because it had like, you know, thermal Pella glass windows and stuff (laughs) in it. It didn't quite fit, you know, the 1920s. So, but the cabin looked great. It was like, well, can we just take all the windows out? Can you just like, (laughs) nah. So, uh, so anyway, I was talking to Kevin one day uh, and, um, he had done some uh, art design work for Sir Henry's and um, and suggested uh, giving uh, Zach a call. He's like, you know, what the heck? And some other good friends of ours. I don't know if you met yet or not. Johnny Bronto Lipscomb with Haunt Scene. And they they do a, a show on just haunts. They follow haunts. They go to haunts all over the country kind of thing. And I, I asked Johnny um, as well. And he uh, he said he thought there might be some some stuff out there to take a look at. So I approached Zach and explained what we were doing. I fully expect him to say, hit the road, you know, we're not. <laughs> and he was like, so lit up over it and, uh, and welcomed us out. So we went out and scouted a, a two or three days, did a bunch of, uh, um, you know, just scout shots and, uh, and you know, kind of had to rework a few things, but made it work and made it work amazingly well. So they were, they were fantastic to uh, be a site sponsor. Um, Same thing with Old Town. I've been going to Old Town for 25 years as just a, you know, an attendee. They have a big car show on Saturday or Friday and Saturday night. I think they have one during the week now even. And so there's, you know, there's always something going on. 
and um, it's not far from where I live and all. So it's, it's a cool place to just go hang out, have a beer and a burger and type thing. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I just kind of run by the mindset that the answer is always no unless you ask. So I just started making some calls and got hold of the, uh, like, uh, the manager. I can't remember his title, but he handles all the special events and things and explain what we were doing. And, and it was the same thing. It's like, oh, yeah, great. I mean, that'd be awesome. So, well, you know, Old Town's going to get some exposure in the movie. And because uh, they're always, of course, trying to promote their uh, their uh, attraction, too. So it just worked out well for everybody. So the the, the bar area where we shot, it's kind of a bar restaurant uh, type thing there. So so we were able to use that and some of the uh, exteriors there as well. So it's uh, I, but as far as, uh, you know, for any any production, you know, indie on up to you know big giant thing, it's so much of it's in the planning. And then you can go out and just execute. And because when you get out there, it's not going to be a piece. I mean, you were there that day and that was not too bad of a day um, um, there. I mean, there's just so much going on that, uh, you know, a million loose ends. So as much as you can do to kind of mitigate that, you're, you're going to be better off. All right. So <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to be wrapping it up in a few minutes, but I, I, for you as a first time writer, director, producer, the, the whole shebang for this flick, what advice do you have for somebody trying to get into the field? Well, first of all, before you start, decide what your favorite tequila is. <laughs> you, will be, you will have six bottles on your desk. But make sure it's cheap tequila because you're going to need the extra money. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't go for it. Um, no, um, I, I'll kind of almost circle back to the planning thing. And this, um, it, it kind of you know, came together in such a weird way because I, I've worked in so many different parts of the business uh, uh, as far as writing, uh, doing cinematography, doing the editing, doing the tech side. It's kind of like, you know, I, I, I was like, you know, Agent Smith. There was like, you know, I, I have done all these things. So it was like I, not being um, was it like micromanaging or whatever, but I just kind of figured out a process where I could like jump in and do all these things in a way. I mean, granted, things could have been done better, bigger budget and things like that. But it was like, hey, I want to see what how far we can push the limited technology, even though I had more. I want to take this and use this whole project and then the ultimate outcome of the movie for other indies to take a look at and say, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, there's some bumps and warts here and there, but you know, there, there are bumps and warts and I don't want to say this star Wars movie name thing, not <laughs> star Wars, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they, you know, there's, there's stuff everywhere. So, um, but just to, uh, I, 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 I think I get a lot of inspiration from guys like Robert Rodriguez, where he, he's got that, man, I don't care what you got Just take your cell phone go, out and go make a movie. And if you don't have anything, don't let anything be an excuse not to be creative and try not to be formulaic. I'm, I'm so good. Just bristle at like making everything look like everything else you see. So just try and find something unique. Try and think of things in ways that you haven't seen a thousand times. Um, and don't, don't let anything, I mean, it sounds so cliche, but don't let anything stand in your way. I mean, just, just go do it, but do it with, with a passion, do it with fun, do it with, you know, with happiness, if that makes any sense, you know, don't dread it or don't make it, oh God, I got to go out there again today. I never had a day like that. It's like, boy, it's going to be a long one and a hot one, but let's have at it. So well, um, that would be it, my long rambling. I, I can add to that though, because excuse me, uh, I'd be IMing Terry at like 10 a.m. Oh, yeah, I'm just starting to edit and doing some music and everything. And Okay, cool. 10 p.m. Yeah, I'm still at it, so I'll get back to you shortly. <laughs> yeah, be prepared to stay up a lot. See, that's the thing, too, and this is funny. I, I, was, uh, I had this conversation with Amy uh, not too long ago, a week or so ago, how, um, you know, I, cast is is very cool i mean that, that that's awesome you know they come in and do their their part and everything but it's kind of like this much of the whole picture it's like the writing and pre-production and scouting and blah 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 blah, blah is all done first you show up and do your parts 
and then you go on to your next gig. Well, then the filmmaker, I just go right back to work. It's like now we start organizing files, which takes two months, and then breaking down the audio files and then the, the editing process and then starting the scoring and then starting all the, you know, the, the, um, the licensing and all the business end of it. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a long process. It's not a quick and easy thing. I mean, of course you had, again, you know, million dollar, 10 million, hundred million dollar budget. You have a zillion people on staff that can push these things through faster. But when you're working with a small crew like us, um, you know, you've only, there's only so many hours in the day and, and there's a lot a lot, a lot to do. So um, just uh, be prepared. If, if you're going to make a film, even a short film, you know, 10 or 20 minute film, um, just be prepared to really buckle down and, and trial and error the heck out of it in editing. I mean, play with it, have fun, look at it from different perspectives. You'll see uh, in this movie, there's a lot of different colors that identify different things. Oh, yeah. um, colors are a big cue in uh, timelines, in scenes, in emotion, in things going on. So there's there's subtle, like almost subliminal things that that really come into that that creative, the art of making a film. And again, getting away from the, the cookie cutter formula where everything looks alike. Every it's like, oh well, you see, you know, X Y Z part seven. It's like yeah, it was like part six, which was like part five. Which, you know, that, that, that kind of typical shot setup and all that is uh, something you can really play with. And it doesn't have to be complicated or complex. It can be super simple, but you can make it uh, compelling. And that also goes back to the strength of your actors. Like, again, John and Crystal and, and even our, our other present-day cast of five. I mean, their, their energy and their, their, their uh, chemistry together was so strong there will be some really long scenes and you're like, I can't believe this scene is going on this long, but it's interesting. I, I, I I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, you know, fly on the wall, you know, like you're like that person sitting at the next table, listening to this conversation. So it kind of gives that, that whole feel. So, so have fun with, with doing stuff like that. Play well, with I, it. I see Sean Smithen saying, yeah, trying to get a hold of Terry during this was well, <laughs> still a pain. Trust me. I know I was trying to work with Terry, getting these programs going. And it was just like, I need an answer. <laughs> like, uh, uh, if, uh, my people get back with you. Oh, wait, I am my people. <laughs> oh, okay, so one more question. I mean, you yeah. were initially the drone guy. Yeah. So going from that to an actual camera and filming and you know, directing, great. I mean, how big a difference is that? Really, drone... And the, the whole drone thing was just part of what I always did. It, it was just, it was sort of a, an element that it's, I mean, it's still super popular, but really blew up there at that, that point, you know, a few years ago, especially. And uh, so that's why I was really focusing on it. And I love new technologies like that. So it was a new thing. It's like, okay, how are these things being used with these little tiny cameras, but getting really good, cool shots and cool footage. And of course, there's bigger ones. That there's ones carrying, you know, RE cameras. I mean, if you want to put 100 grand in the air, which <laughs> I'd be terrified, but people do it. And um, so uh, I was just fascinated by that. So I, I was really immersed in it. At, uh, not only because you're doing two things when you're doing drone cinematography, you're flying an aircraft and you're doing the camera work. We're holding up, you know, a camera is kind of like, well, you're only doing, you're only working half as hard now. You're just, you know, you're doing that. Not really, but you know what I mean? It's, you don't have to worry about crashing into anything. Yeah. So, uh, so it was just sort of a, a gear shift, but, um, then, uh, uh, along came like the, um, the 360 cameras, which, which shoot in 360 degrees and you can do some amazingly cool stuff. There's a few shots in Harlow's. You won't know they're three shot with a 360 degree camera because of the way I framed them. But, um, there, um, there is like one whole, scene with music that was shot in 360 but it was edited down to look flat and so you can get these shots that would you're like it cost you thousands of dollars to rent the gear and the cranes and all that that crap to get so again trying to leverage this technology and flesh it out say okay all right now everybody do this you can you can go out and get this crazy shot for you know not a zillion dollars and um then, uh, you know, just it just sort of is like whenever something new comes out, I've got to 
get it and, and see how can wedge it into a, a project. So uh, another really cool point about Harlow's Haunt, we got to discuss the soundtrack. The soundtrack. Can't forget the soundtrack. Well, sound is, and always has been to me, super, super, super important. Um, our, our score and sound design was done by a, a guy from South Florida down your way, Carlos Crespo. And Carlos is um, a composer. He has a band, um, De, De Effector. De Effector. I always screw it up. It's, it's D slash E F F E K T O R. And they're kind of like a horror metal ish band. Um, but uh, Carlos scored the thing and he has such a good uh, finger on the pulse of horror. He did just a great, great cinematic score for the movie. But um, we, we had some feature stuff. And when I was uh, on, on um, Brandon's show and spoke to Spider, that still had a big impact on me when Spider One was on. And I was able to talk to him a little bit because it lit a few fires of thought on um, the use of sound and the absence of sound. So I was kind of conscious of that, where to put music and where not to put music or certain sounds throughout the film. But uh, I do have some really cool feature um, music. Um, uh, I, I'm sure probably most everybody's heard of, of the band Bush. Bush? Bush? Um, well, the, uh, the, the current bass player, his name is Corey Britz, amazingly cool guy. Um, worked it out where we could use one of his songs from a solo record he did during lockdown. Um, I just, just a fantastic, fantastic song and, and just super thrilled that, that he was able to put that together. And actually he and Nick Hughes perform on the song. Nick is also the drummer for Bush now. Um, uh, Carlos's band, The Effector, did uh, a, an amazingly cool song for the closing credits. Um, but we have some uh, a featured band in that actually appear in the film, the Propel, and um, the Propel does some music. They uh, and on disc two, they a bunch of their music is on disc two, the behind the scenes. Um, uh, Marky and Carrie Karloff, and I love, love, love these people. I, I just want to throw my arms around every time I see them. They are so cool. Uh, check them out on YouTube, everybody, the, the Propel. Um, it's like people with an R, Propel, the way I, I think of it. They are kind of like a, if I had to describe it, it's kind of like a punk horror 60s surfer garage band sound. It's so fun. They're, and they just had a new record come out. Their music is so fun. I don't dance. That makes me want to dance. It's <laughs> so cool. Um and then one of our uh, lead actors, Dylan Entriago, also did uh, some music. Um, and uh, we, at the very end, when when you watch the film, at, after the end credits, keep watching, because there's a short behind the scenes with Dylan's featured music there called Forte Forte. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of good, a lot of good songs there. And then, ah, damn it, see, I almost said something about the future then. Ah. Uh. So I'll, I'll, I'll take you off track. So Dylan's the lead singer of that band. Dylan, his band, he did this song was um, him and a friend of his just did as kind of like a side project for Harlow's. But Dylan is uh, in a band called Sad Academy, and he plays uh, guitar. And actually, how how weird is this? A few weeks ago, um, they played at Old Town at a bar across the little sidewalk street thing from where we shot. It was just, it was so weird being back there, but they have a, a cool bar there that um, I can't remember the name of it right off, but they do like a concert thing. They've got like a big like room in the back, like a big, big party room. And it's got a big stage and everything. And they had like three or four bands there and they are all amazing. But Dylan's band, Sad Academy is so I, The song that I heard, I, if, if you guys like Green Day, yeah. You'll like Dylan's band. Yeah, very, very Green Day-ish, Greenish Day. Okay. Green -ish. It had a good punk vibe, and so I enjoyed it. Very much. And their musicianship is so good. I mean, they're so tight, and they're they're really good musicians, and, and they, uh, they are really into it. Dylan, man, as an actor, I can't wait for people to see Dylan. He just steals the show. He was also in uh, The Beast Comes at Midnight. 
yes. which is um, showing tonight, probably just about wrapping up at the Tampa Bay uh, Film Festival. And that's where Amy is tonight. So she's out there kind of repping Harlow's out there at the festival. Very cool. So, Any chance that uh, Ed's going to show up Monday night? Um, I uh, asked him. I think he had something going on. So oh, I bummer. didn't get a solid yes or no out of him. I think it's just sort of like one of those um, hopefully maybes. But um, yeah, he's uh, he's he's been pretty busy lately, I think. But uh, Ed's such a cool guy, Ed McKeever. And, and that whole group. Was, was so much fun to work with uh, last year when the beast comes at midnight. So, you know, the Central Florida horror stuff is just. Yeah, it's freaking blowing up, man. And they have a Tampa group for it. They have a Central Florida group for it. And it's amazing. I have this poster right here that I got from you that I'm going to be bringing on Monday. I need everybody right. else to sign. It, so, yeah. I figure it's a good opportunity. John's going to be there. You said Braille most likely. Oh, no, I already have Braille's on there. Who do mm -hmm. I need? Dylan? The Crystal? Dylan. Yeah. I'll, uh, uh, in fact, I I have a few posters left I will probably bring along, too. So whoever makes it out, there's your chance. They're, they're, they're the, the last of their kind. Very good. but they're they're like the uh the, has the billing block and all the credits and everything so they're they're a cool poster so i gotta ask you again because we're gonna plug this one more time you got the dvd coming out that's DVD. gonna be available on your website yes uh i am actually uh started building the uh the order link for that it will probably go live in the next couple three days the uh, the reproduction company uh, pinged me today, said everything is in, done, approved. Uh, we took a little extra time to put that second DVD together. I was wanting to get it out a week or so ago, but it was like, well, let's let's make this good. I mean, everybody just throws you know the feature on and let it let it go. And we, we had so much fun behind the scenes that there's a lot of fun shots. I mean, I could made the behind the scenes thing six hours long, <laughs> but I'll save that for the Blu-ray. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I just uh, put about 20 minutes or so together because I figured that would be about a good, you know, dose and you, you'd have enough of us and our hijinks uh, by then. But it's it's kind of a fun watch and you can see, you know, just a bunch of goofballs standing around the dark. <laughs> so there's a rumor that there's going to be two different versions of this DVD. There's going to be the regular version and then possibly a signed version. There could be a signed version or could, there's could be a signed version option and what that is shaping up to be is just the uh you can just opt for the regular plain old dvd or we are looking at um the uh the signed version with a poster kind of like the the maximum fear version or or something like that. So we'll come up with a goofy name for it, but uh, you know, get the 11 by 17 poster signed by some of us, you know, whatever. Um, and, uh, and the DVD as well, if you want personalized, just let us know when you order, you know, we'll figure that out. So we're going to have the, the two different, you know, the standard version, the signed version. And we're um, also working with our distributor uh, on the, uh, on the streaming platforms. Uh, so that'll be coming right after the first of the year ish, roughly, because it has to get in their queues and the pipeline and blah 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 blah. And it's like waiting on the bus; you got to just get in line and wait you know, your turn. But um, but that that'll be fun. So it's uh, I, I'm just so stoked about uh, Monday night to see uh, to see everybody and and um, and watch it again. And again, that's Harlow's Haunt Tampa premiere at Spook Easy Lounge, Monday, December 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 1909 North 15th Street, Tampa, Florida. So if you're in the general area, hell, I'm on the freaking east coast of Florida and I'm going to be there. So people from all over Florida should come. Exactly. Hey, Georgia, Alabama, whatever. <laughs> well, Tennessee, John's yeah. coming. You know, the um, keys, it may be, you know, 12 hours away, but whatever. Come on. I mean, it's <laughs> one one night only at the spook easy. All but right. And this is what place. we're going to do next. We're going to drag this down here if I can find it. So, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go to Harlow's Haunt. Like them on Facebook. I think you have YouTube and Instagram. Uh, we do. It's on Instagram. It's just Harlow's Haunt. 
on Facebook. It's Harlow's Hot Movie, and, I, and it's the same on YouTube. And on YouTube, we've got a few videos up there, some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, we do have that um, that one scene with Corey's uh, song, too. So I pulled that as like sort of a just a little special thing. But that's kind of got a little pivotal pivotal part in the movie. Pivotable, pivotable, <laughs> pit, pit, pitiful part of the movie. <laughs> Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already, please go to the Indie Escape Network and like, subscribe to Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. Eh, I'm not sure about this whole Twitter thing anymore. And I'm not paying, uh, I'm not paying for a blue dot. <laughs> not playing for, paying for a blue check, a blue dot. Uh, blue dot. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, let's see. I'll Ah, Kelly, you're going to be there Monday. I'm excited to see you then. Absolutely. I want to talk planes and jets and stuff because, as I mentioned last night, my yeah. dad's baby was the uh, F-14 Tomcat in Grumman. I think he did the F-18 as well. Hmm. But anyway, uh, well, she, classic stuff where she works, I believe. But great show. Wishing Terry and Team Harlow all the best. Very cool. So, Terry, where can we find you on personally on social media? And if they wanted to follow you, please. So if they want to follow me, I'm I'm kind of mostly hover on the um, Facebook and the Instagram worlds. So uh, on Instagram, look for Black Dog Films with a Z, and just uh, just my name, uh, Terry Gerald, on um, on Facebook. I think it's yeah, it's I. Do I have to say my middle name? Because somehow I put that on there. Terry <laughs> Lee Gerald is, is my favorite. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your middle name is Lee? Lee, yeah. And you're from West Virginia. Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> nice and nice. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, any yeah. last words, young man? Well, and, and our website, Black Dog Films with a Z. And there's, uh, of course, Harlow's Hunt is a tab up on top. And, uh, you know, the homepage has... Other stuff we do, uh, uh, commercials, just all kinds of crazy shoots and um, and that that kind of stuff. But uh, Harlow's has its own page, and that's where the uh, the uh, store link to buy the DVD and other goodies that we have. And there's one more thing I'd like to um, one smelly thing I'd like to talk about. Um, um, Hearts of the Mystic Folk. You heard that 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 gang. No, 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 never, never, never heard of it before. It's this, is, is this it? But yeah, it's this crazy wild bunch uh, from <laughs> from somewhere have done two amazing wax melts, and they taste great too. If you haven't tried one, <laughs> try one. I, you know, two. It looks like a, um, they go well with the tequila. <laughs> they do that second bottle, especially. Um, <laughs> And your teeth are so shiny after. Uh, oh, my wife and daughter will definitely appreciate that. That's Hearts of the Mystic Folk. You can find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Etsy, I think. Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's they're amazing. I, I've only uh, burned the Harlow's one so far. And it because uh, I've only got one burner. I don't want to waste. But it's like Because it's so good and the smell doesn't go away. And uh, so... Y'all got to go grab some of those. They are fantastic. So, and I, I appreciate that greatly. That was and, that was amazing. And as do we. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. And let's see. I just want to check the comments, make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't think I did. Except I, I got to find out who these Facebook users were. Unfortunately, they're coming from your group at Harlow's Haunt. Because they didn't give permission for us to use uh, their name and like goodness, unfortunately. Right? There's, yes, well, who's that? Yes, Hearts of the Mystic Folk are I, awesome. I, I, have my mom. I, I bet that that I bet that is my mom. <laughs> she's awesome. Yeah, uh, she, she. Every time I talk to her, it's 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 a wax melt discussion. <laughs> it goes on and on. She she loves them so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in the area, please. Harlow's Haunt Tampa premiere at Spook Easy Lounge Monday, December 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's at 1909 North 15th Street in Tampa. We're looking forward to seeing everybody there. 
and I'm looking forward to some of the treats and teas and stuff they have there because they have an amazing menu as well. Yeah. It, uh, they, they've got such a cool menu. And, and this is a tea bar, by the way. It's, it's not a liquor bar. They Teas and kavas. And, but they have some special teas there too. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really interesting, cool place. Now, the catacombs downstairs, I think, has regular drinks. Um, but, um, but upstairs is, uh, I'm sorry. What's a covet? It's, it's like, I don't know. It's like some kind of special tea. Okay. Fair I, enough. I'm, I'm not like familiar with the term. It's like, it's like a type of tea. I, I don't know. I'm not yeah. much of a tea person. I think it's kind of like, it's oh. better than plain. Old Damn. Tea. Ken, you're putting me in a predicament there, brother. <laughs> Will anybody be going live there? Um, I'll see what I can do can't make any promises i don't know uh, terry's gonna be too busy schmoozing and everything but i'll see what i can do i'm definitely gonna be taking pictures so we we can do whatever whatever you want joe i'm it sounds it's, fair. it's all about fun and it's it's just gonna be it's just gonna be such a fun event and see everybody especially see john i mean if if anybody hasn't met the tornado tasmanian devil yet no, wait a minute. If you haven't met John that wasn't on a stream that was hiccuping and Max Hedroming, you're in for a treat. <laughs> he is just amazing. I, I just adore him. There, there's just no words. There he is. <laughs> All right. John. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out of here. Please join us in Tampa on Monday and... I don't know. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to we'll be a see lot y'all there. Sounds Terry. great. Thank you, Joe, for putting this together. And I can't wait to see you out there. Oh, my absolute pleasure. And we are out. <laughs>